Welcome to the Asian Art Museum. I'm here in front of our tea house. It is a building within a building. It was built for us in Japan and then they took it apart and put it back together here in our museum. It's built without a single nail. Now, we're not going to talk about a tea house right now, but this is very like a traditional Japanese house. You notice the windows made of rice paper and your door might be the same sliding door instead of a door that opens. And on the floor, tatami mats. These mats you'll find in houses all over Japan. And they're always the same size. So if you were describing your bedroom to someone, you could say, oh, I have a four-mat room. And they would know exactly what you mean. In fact, this one is a four-mat room. If you count the mats here, one, two, three, four. So this would be a four-mat bedroom. And you'll see up above the roof, is held up by bamboo, which you know grows everywhere in the forests of Japan. Well, if you've ever been to Japan, you might have seen one, a tanuki. They're a small animal about the size of a raccoon or a badger. Sometimes people call them raccoon dogs or badgers. And today, I'm going to call him badger. Also, in this story, you're going to meet something I'm sure you have never seen. Tengu. Tengu are magic creatures who live deep in the forest. And adult Tengu are like me, except they have wings. And they have very long, pointy noses. Tengu children don't have the wings, but they have the noses. Now, Badger was out in the forest one day and he heard laughter and he came to the top of the hill and looked down and there were three Tengu children and they were playing with something. He saw it was a fan and they were fanning each other and grabbing the fan and laughing and carrying on and when they fanned each other's noses on one side their noses that were pointed like this would grow out as long as their arm. And then when they fanned from the other side, the noses would grow back to normal Tengu size. And they were grabbing the fan and fanning each other's noses on one side and the other, and their noses were going like that. Badger saw them, but he thought, oh, oh, I want that fan. But he knew they weren't just going to give it to him, right? But he knew this thing about Tengu children. Tengu children love mochi, those sweet pounded rice cakes. And he went home and he made four and he put them in a bamboo basket just like those baskets over there. And he put a napkin over it and carried them back to where those Tengu children were still playing with their fan. But as he approached, they stopped and they began to sniff. <laughs> Ooh, what's in the basket? What's in the basket? And he pulled back the napkin. Oh, can I have one? Oh, I love mochi. And he held it out, and each one of them took a sweet little rice cake. And that left one in the basket. And they began to eat. They were so good. But while they were eating, they were all looking at that fourth rice cake. And when they'd finished, can I have that one too? Well. There are three of you and only one of, I know, we'll have a contest. Whichever of you can stand perfectly still, close your eyes and hold your breath like this. Whoever can do that the longest, that will be the one who gets the mochi. So the three Tengu children went like this. And while they were standing there with their eyes closed, do you know what the badger did? That's right. He took their fan and ran over the hill and out of sight. He was gone. <laughs> when the Tengu children opened their eyes, they realized they had been tricked. Now Badger was off to have some fun. You know, badgers love to play tricks. And did I tell you, I don't think I did, that badgers can change shape. <sighs> Why, who knows? The student sitting right next to you might be a badger just pretending to be a student in school. Or your teacher might be a badger just pretending to love children and love to help them learn. I might be a badger just pretending to be a storyteller at the Asian Art Museum. 
Well, Badger thought, I will go into town and have some fun. But he knew that if he walked down the street, people would notice. If you went outside and saw a badger walking down the street, you'd pay attention. He thought, I need to change my shape. And he changed himself into a handsome young man and walked into town and into the temple. And there, in the front of the temple, was the altar where people would leave gifts of thanks and say their prayers. And he knelt down nearby and waited. And soon, down that center aisle of the temple, came a young woman. She was dressed in a beautiful silk kimono with dragonflies embroidered in it and gold hem. And she was wearing very fancy jewelry and earrings and necklace and combs in her hair. It was clear when you looked at her that she was from one of the richest families in town. And when she came down to the altar and knelt down, Badger reached out with his fan and began to fan her. And you know what happened, don't you? Her nose went, She shrieked and ran up the aisle and down the street towards home and into her home and past her mother and into her room. Her mother, who had seen her go by, went and opened her door. Ah, daughter, what has happened to you? I don't know, mother, but look at my nose. It's as long as my arm. What am I going to do? Well, her mother wasn't quite sure what they should do. She and the father got together and talked, and they decided to call a doctor. The doctor came. He was an old man. He had a long gray beard, and he loved to run his fingers through it while he was thinking. Hmm. Yes. Nori, I think, and miso soup. Now, nori, if you've ever had it, have you ever had them? They're those sheets of seaweed dried into something that's as thin as paper, a little crispy snack that you eat. Sometimes you get it in little pieces, sometimes they come in big sheets. You can buy them in a Japanese grocery store. And the doctor said, you take nori, put it into a bowl of steaming miso soup, then wrap the wet nori around her nose and have her breathe the steam from the soup. Do that morning, noon, and night for one week, and her nose will be back to normal. And so, for a week, they wrapped her nose with wet nori, and she breathed the steam from the miso soup morning, noon, and night. And do you know what happened? Nothing. Her nose was just as long as it had been. They called another doctor. He also had a long gray beard. Hmm. Yes. I think um, unripe persimmons. Have you ever had a persimmon? You know, that orange fruit, they're so, when they're ripe, they're so soft and juicy. It's like a, like a very ripe tomato. You can almost just drink the nectar inside. But when they are not ripe, they are as hard as a baseball. I once had one. The first one I had, I cut it. I put it in my mouth, and it sucked all the moisture out of my mouth. I felt like I had poured baby powder on my tongue. But this doctor, this doctor said, yes, one unripe persimmon for breakfast, one for lunch, one for dinner. Do this for one week, and her nose will be back to normal. And so for a week, that poor girl had to eat an unripe persimmon morning, noon, and night. Oh, it sucked all the moisture out of her mouth. She had to drink cups and cups of tea to get the moisture back. And at the end of a week, do you know what had happened? Nothing. They called a magician. He had a very large fan. He brought it in, and he waved it up and down over her nose. Nose, nose, anything that grows, be small. It didn't work. The husband turned to the wife. Wife, what shall we do? We are rich. Let us offer our reward. And so they put out signs all over town, offering half their fortune to whoever could fix their daughter's nose. And if he were a young man, he could also marry their daughter. Badger saw these signs and he thought, ah, this is my chance. 
And he came and knocked on their door. Yes. I am here about your daughter. Are you a doctor? No. A magician? No. Then what makes you think you can do something for our daughter's nose? Well, have the doctors and the magicians succeeded? They had to admit the doctors and the magicians had done nothing. So they invited him in. And when he got into her bedroom, you know what he did, don't you? He pulled out his fan and fanned her nose from the other side. And sure enough, it went until it was just as cute as yours and yours and yours. And everybody was happy. The girl, of course, was happy because now she had her own nose back. And the parents were happy because now their daughter was beautiful again. And she was going to get married to this very clever young man. And Badger was happy because now he had half their fortune and a beautiful young bride. And a week later, there was a wedding. And everybody in town came and they ate and drank and ate and drank all afternoon. At the end of the afternoon, Badger was so full. You know how when you eat and drink a lot, sometimes you get just a little, uh, just a little sleepy? Oh, Badger was so sleepy. He went into the house. And you know, in Japan, you don't have a bed like this. You lay out a futon, roll out a fat padded uh, uh, cushion on the floor and lie down there. And he rolled out a futon and lay down on that futon and in a minute, all you heard was He was snoring so loud, it made the rice paper windows rattle. He was snoring so loud, you could hear him out in the yard. In fact, he was snoring so loud, you could hear him across town. He was snoring so loud, you could hear him all the way out in the woods where those three Tengu children were still so upset about the trick that Badger had played on them. And when they heard it, there was something about that snor that snoring. There's something. Shall we go see? Now, you remember, Tengu are magic creatures. All they have to do is wish, and there they are. They wished, and there they were, standing in that bedroom, looking down at this young man snoring. And then they saw in his waistband a fan, and they pulled it out and opened it up. <gasps> this is our fan. That's him. Oh, are you going to be sorry? And they began to fan his nose. And as they fanned it, it grew as long as his arm, but they kept fanning. And it grew across the floor and down the hall. And they kept fanning. And it grew out into the yard. But they kept fanning. And it grew up, 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 as high as the tallest pine tree. But they kept fanning. And it grew up, 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 until it poked through the clouds. And there, above the clouds in the heavenly gardens, were two carpenters. They were making a new bridge for the garden of the gods. And they needed just, just one more piece, one long, smooth piece for a handrail. And they saw Badger's nose poke up through the clouds. And one of them said, look, that might do. And they began to pull. And they pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled and pulled until there on the other end was Badger. That won't do. And the two carpenters went off elsewhere to find their handrail. But now, there he was, up on the clouds. And if you go out on a day like today, when there's blue sky and white clouds, look up. You might see him. You'll recognize him easily because he has a very, very, very long nose. You'll see him pacing back and forth, back and forth, looking down, trying to spot those three Tengu children who got him into so much trouble.